a, a big part of the challenge is disappearing. Is is not. I mean, you you can see a camera a couple of times, but for the most, p there were a lot of cameras in there, and we we hid them, and we really just tried to not be present at all. And I think that was one of the trickiest things. Yeah. No. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> It is, it is a challenge because I suppose people sometimes don't think that theater is documentary, but really what we ca we're, we're trying to capture is the, authent is the authenticity of, of the performance and to see the way Johnny is able to engage with an entire audience and to get them to interact with him. I mean, it's, it's an incredible thing to see, I think. Um, so can you tell us more about Johnny Donahoe? I mean, he was, he was a new performer to me before uh, seeing this film. Uh, tell us more about him. Yeah, he collaborated with Duncan on, on the piece. And I mean, it's just a sort of uh, brilliant tour de force. I mean, I'm British, sort of, well, I'm American, but I'm also British. So, I, so there's a lot of things in it that I see that are familiar to me. I don't know if they, well, kale. Yeah, you know, we don't eat kale in England so much, you know. Um, and, uh, but it, also Duncan, is, as, a, as an author and playwright, is an incredible, he's also written a play called uh, People, Places and Things. And he is able to bring incredible intensity and I think this authenticity about experiences with addiction and suicide and, and put them in front of people in a way that's completely different because this isn't necessarily a film about suicide, but it is about depression. It's, I don't know, I suppose he just takes it, he takes a familiar subject or an issue and is able to completely reverse it and look at it the other way. How does this uh, film fit into your larger work, which has been so strong in uh, queer representation? Well, I think it's depression and, and suicide are, are high amongst the LGBTQ community, so it, but I think at the same time, See, what I love about this play and what I, I find so amazing is the way Johnny is able to connect with anybody. And I think it's perhaps one of the sort of key pieces of that is that we all, I, I wonder if there's anyone in this room who hasn't felt depression. And, and I think it's... Well, th you're asking that this week? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> truly. And I think that it's, it's so important, if you're thinking about it, not to do it. And uh, as he says it in the play, and I, I do think that there are so many, as simple as it seems, as silly as it seems, I think there's so many brilliant reasons. I, I, I personally find the list very inspiring. Um, one of my favorite ones is uh, that uh, the, the calm that follows the realization that although you are in a regrettable situation, there's nothing you can do about it. That seems appropriate for this week, doesn't it? <laughs> It says that you filmed three performances. The the characters or the 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 members, of the audience who personify his father and uh, Sam are so uh, perfect. Uh, uh, and and the fact that you found these two great individuals in the same performance uh, strikes me as either wild luck or great planning or you know uh, how wild luck. Honestly, it it was like. I mean, but that's the thing, I think, about Johnny, was his ability to walk among the audience before, as people were settling, and have some sort of intuitive understanding of who would play with him. And the dad, oh my gosh. I mean, can you imagine so someone handing you a microphone and asking you to make a, a wedding speech right on the spot? I mean, I get tense just thinking about that. but. He was so good, and they they were real people, but I think it's it's two things. Now, does that get, in the performances yeah. you so, saw, did like, that kind of crazy luck happen often? or All like the it, time, all the time. I, I mean, I think that's part of the beauty of this play, and that's part of what was and is so magical about it. Somehow, the audience sort of rises to the occasion. There is something, and that's what made it so unique and important to try and document, because it, there is, I mean, he's a star, but then it becomes this very real people experience. And there were many, I mean, all of the sock puppets we saw could have been on here. And, 
you know, they, and all of the, I mean, th they all pretty much rose to the occasion. Um, and it's, yeah, it was surprising. You know, the, the best thing, I mean, she was great with the sock puppet, but one of the great things about it was that the person sitting next, next to her was wearing a camel colored coat. So the black sock stood out against the black <laughs> coat. That was really the determining factor for us because you could see the sock puppet, but they were all really good. And it's so are, are you intercutting? I think they all had black socks, weirdly. Yeah. So and socks. I mean, amazingly. are you intercutting moments from other performances? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's three performances blended. mixed together, but with your main characters consistent. Yes. There's three performances. But you do see him again and again and again. It's Toby Maguire, isn't it? Toby Maguire was in, in the yeah. audience, which is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good test, see if people are paying attention. And Did you see Toby Maguire? But, but, but <laughs> even though we intercut three, like, I, I, a lot of it was really the first performance. Like, we did rely on one performance the most. Um, it was very, very real. Yeah, yeah no, it was. And by the way, we weren't going to make it color. I mean, we weren't, weren't going to make it black and white. We, we went back and forth. But we're such design queens. And some of the things people were wearing, I just couldn't bear <laughs> to look at. And so like, we were just, it just looked so much more stylish from black and white, right? <laughs> what more are you doing to get the film out to the audiences who could use it the most? We are working with HBO now to figure that out. There's a website that's been activated, and the film is actually going to premiere on HBO on December 26th. Um, so those plans are still coming together on how we can sort of, um, uh, well, get the word out. I was going to say target that audience, but just get the word out as much as possible. And I appreciate you coming and sharing that. All right, right here. Do either of you have a list, and what are the first things on it, if you do? Um, I don't have a list, but I think the first thing would be drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, um, for me, I'll tell you my favorite thing is Saturday afternoons. <laughs> Saturday afternoon? Are we enhancing it or spoiling it with this? <laughs> It's a little more nerve-wracking than the normal Saturday afternoon, which is normally like shop, lounge around. You know, it's, it's that, I love Saturday afternoons because theoretically there is nothing, there's no obligation. Whereas Sundays are different because Sundays is like gonna be Monday and Sundays, are, I just find Sundays. This is brilliant things. I'm not gonna talk about Sundays. I don't like Sundays. Well, we appreciate you sharing your saf Saturday afternoon special time with us. Um, can take one or two more questions if someone's got them. Anyone? Yeah, back there in the corner. Did all of the participants who wanted to come from the same show? I, uh, the question, uh, again, did all the performance come from the same show? Um, I'm pretty sure they all did except for the lecturer. And, he, and we, kept, we, we pulled his because we just really liked the hat and the scarf was really cool. Still, it's, kind of, it's amazing that you can do that, that you could get him and insert it uh, so flawlessly. When you watch the show again, you'll... Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be able to spot. Well, I, you know, I should add, I, I do a uh, podcast called Pure Nonfiction that you can uh, listen to, subscribe for free on iTunes. Uh, I did a long conversation with Fenton and Randy uh, earlier this year about their film, Maplethorpe, Look at the Pictures. And then just last week, I did a conversation with Sheila Nevins. Um, and in that conversation... She talked about how her first love was theater. She had uh, studied at Yale to uh, direct theater. And, uh, and when you know that about her and you uh, see all the, so many of the films that she supported that have uh, theater connections, it all uh, makes sense. And Sheila's here uh, today. I'd just like to acknowledge her. Uh, can you stand up, Sheila? Are you awake? <laughs> Thank you, Sheila Evans. Um, Anything else? Should we wrap up? Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming. We've got five more days of Doc NYC. I hope you see more films. Thanks especially to Randy Barbato and Fenton Bailey. <laughs>